Hello. Today I thought I'd read you one of one of the stories that I wrote a, a few years ago. It's a, a little bedtime story and it's called Snowy the Mouse. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Snowy the field mouse lived in a tiny house delicately woven into some tall grass in the corner of a field. The tiny house was perfect for Snowy as he could fit in everything that he needed to be snug and cosy. And luckily for him all of his friends lived very close by. It was a small space. He had a very comfortable bed. It was covered by the thickest blankets you could ever imagine and he had incredibly fluffy pillows. He slept surrounded by all the nuts, seeds and roots that he had gathered during the summer in readiness for the cold, harsh winter ahead. Snowy had gone to bed early one evening so he could wake up feeling fresh and ready for another adventure. And the little mouse could feel something that was going to happen soon. He just knew it and he wanted to be ready for it. Well, the very next morning, Snowy opened the door just in time to see his good friend Hoppy the rabbit passing by with two large juicy carrots in his bag. Good morning, shouted Snowy, making Hoppy jump. Oh, good morning, Snowy. I didn't see you there, said Hoppy, looking surprised. Would you like to share one of my juicy carrots for breakfast? Well, Snowy climbed down for his house to have a sniff of the carrots. He was feeling rather peckish and he hadn't had breakfast yet. The carrots looked very juicy and they were both soon gnawing away at them. Yummy, thought Snowy. Perfect breakfast. Halfway through the carrots they heard a loud buzzing noise coming from behind. They looked up and saw Bumble the bee coming towards them, carrying something rather strange underneath him. Hi guys, said Bumble, slightly out of breath. I'm glad I found you. I was wondering if either of you knew what this was, pointing to what had dropped on the ground, this big, long, stripy, gangly thing uh, that was lying there in front of them now. Well, they both peered at this purple gangly thing, then at each other, then back at the gangly thing. And they said, Whoa, I've never seen anything like it before. It looks to be some sort of flower. Oh. And Hoppy said, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe we should ask Grandpa Mole. Maybe he knows what it is. He knows everything. And so, nodding their heads in agreement, Snowy, Hoppy and Bumble picked up the colourful mystery object and went off to find Grandpa Mole. Grandpa Mole was a rather sleepy, friendly old soul who lived underground in a labyrinth of tunnels in the corner of the field. The three friends arrived at Mole's hole. Snowy guarded the thing while Hoppy and Bumble stuck their heads into the tiny entrance and called out to Mole. Mole, are you there? They called together. They heard some shuffling voices and slowly Mole came into view. Yes, he said. Who is it? In a rather sleepy, sort of just woken up voice, he was a little bit grumpy. And he, I don't think he was expecting visitors. We have a question said Hoppy and Bumble together. We found something strange and, and we don't know what it is and we thought that you might know, because you know everything. Well, you'll have to show it to me, he said. Bring it here, bring it closer, said Mole, peering through the darkness of the tunnel. The friends pushed a plant-like thing towards Mole in through the entrance, trying not to get tickled by the dangling roots and the little animals that were d climbing up and down the walls. What happened next surprised them all. As they pushed the flower into the hole, it started glowing. 
It was beautiful. They'd never seen anything like it before. Ah, it's a firefly flower, said Ma. Oh, that's hard to say. A fire, a firefly flower. I've heard so many stories about it, but I thought they were all made up. I've never actually seen one before. What does it do? asked Snowy. I mean, what is it used for? Well, I, I'm not sure, said Mole, but in the stories that I heard, it was said that the fireflies grew a magic plant that made them glow when they drank the nectar. Ooh, can we drink it too? said Bumble excitedly. Will it make us glow like fireflies? Snowy was just about to add something when there was a sudden flapping noise outside the hole. They all stood and looked around and listened to find out what it was. That sounds like the mad bat, said Mole. Maybe the flower is hers and she's looking for it. You'd better come inside. Then all was quiet. They listened and again the flapping noise started. Suddenly, a peeping, squeaking swarm of fireflies swelled in through the entrance as well, pushing the friends down the tunnel, coming to a stop right above the flower. So, Mole, Happy, Snowy and Bumble all stood there with their mouths open, looking up at the excited fireflies. Speak, said Mole to the fireflies, who'd now gone quiet. One of the fireflies timidly moved towards them and said in a tiny voice, Please, flower, back, uh, mad bat, chasing, thirsty, need flower. Just then there was a loud bang at the other entrance. The big mad bat had tried to follow the fireflies into the hole and her big head got stuck in the entrance. Served her right for being so greedy. Everybody jumped and moved further away from the entrance towards the back of the tunnel. Oh no, we're trapped, screamed Hoppy. She will eat us all. Fiercely, Bumble said, well, I'm not scared of that bat. I'll sting her if she tries to eat me. Mole said, don't worry about the mad bat. She's too large to get in any further. The fireflies relaxed when they heard that and stopped squeaking. Fiercely, Bumble said, well, I'm not scared of that old bat. I'll sting her if she tries to eat me. Mole said, don't worry about the bat. She's too large to get in any further. The fireflies visibly relaxed when they heard that and stopped squeaking. The elder firefly came forward again and added very politely, can we please have our, our flower back? Thank you very much, kind sir. Of course you can have it back said Snowy. But first of all, we need to find a way out of here. Grandpa Mole, is there another way out? Don't worry, said Mole. There's always a way out when there's a mole about. They all followed Mole down the long dark tunnels with the fireflies lighting the way until they found an old secret entrance. One by one, they sneaked out of the hole, looking round to see if the bat had uh, escaped and was coming after them. But she was still stuck fast in the main entrance. And they all made their way out very safely, and they headed for the nearest big oak tree, which was a well-known meeting place. To thank their new friends, the fireflies performed the most magical light show you can imagine. A beautiful dance. Uh, and it looked just like the stars twinkling in the night sky. It was truly magical. Mole thanked the fireflies and bade them, bade them good day. He then went back down the hole all the way to the entrance to give the mad bat a little nip on the nose. The mad bat squealed, hissed and wriggled free and flapped her wings and flew away. She was never seen again. The fireflies were happy to have their flower back and Snowy and Bumble and Hoppy sat in the clearing looking up at the empty sky just a moment ago where the wonderful dance was held. That was fantastic wasn't it said Hoppy. Yeah 
I still wish we'd tried it ourselves. I've always fancied glowing in the dark, said Bumble. We can ask them next time. They know who we are now, said Snowy. But now it's time to go home. So they bid each other good, good night and they went their separate ways. Snowy climbed up the grass stems into his cosy little house. He jumped straight into bed, pulled the covers right up to his chin, and he was asleep as soon as his head hit the pillow. And within seconds he was dreaming of his next big adventure. What a day they had. The end.